You want me to turn a firefight into a sales pitch? I want you to turn the intruders into stains and save your little comments for the Sunday funnies. Welcome, huge movie fanatic Nate stopping on by. As promised, I'm stopping by to showcase my entire Robot Wars VHS collection. As you can see, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, I thought I had five. It looks like I've got, wait, do I have five? Yeah, oh, it looks like I've got six Robot Wars VHS tapes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got a Robot Wars problem, and this, this, this spawned uh, basically 30 years ago when Robot Wars was new on home video. Just being a, a movie fan and a huge movie fanatic since I was, you know, before I was a teenager and since I was probably 10, 11, 12 in those years and stuff, and once I discovered, like, with Suncoast in video stores selling their previously viewed cassettes and buying them at Suncoast brand new and stuff, I, I really, you know, initially we started, you know, doing, uh, you know, copying tapes. But when I found out how cool it was to, like, collect them, you know, buy them and collect them, that's when everything, uh, you know, started going downhill from there or uphill, depending on your point of view. But over all my years in the 90s of just buying being able to find VHS's used from video stores or even new at Suncoast, Robot Wars was one of the most elusive VHS tapes of the 90s. So what happened was, like by the end of the 90s, maybe 98, 99, all kinds of video stores were purging their VHS. So I, I, I made up for all those years where I couldn't freaking find any Robot Wars VHS tapes, either new or previously viewed. So that, that, this is probably the, I think this is the most copies of one movie on VHS that I own, most likely. I thought it was five, but turns out it's six. Six whopping VHS copies of Robot Wars. As you can see, only two of them contain the original packaging, and the other four are um, cut down for clamshell by video update and things. So I decided it only made sense to just showcase in in-depth one of these, and I'm going to obviously pick the best VHS to do that, and then I can kind of half-acidly show you the other ones just to save time. So let's get into it and showcase the 30-year-old North American VHS release of... Robot Wars. Da, da, da. Wow. As we can see, looking on the back on the bottom, copyright 1993 by Paramount Pictures, all rights reserved. If you didn't know, in the 90s, the first half of the 90s, uh, Paramount Pictures would distribute Full Moon movies on VHS. What a great deal for Full Moon at the time. Taking a closer look at the front cover, the Full Moon art department in the 90s was, was conjuring up some pretty cool stuff. First, there was Robot Jocks, Robot Wars, and this is kind of like a, not officially, but unofficially like a, you know, I guess a kind of a half-ass, loose Robot Jocks sequel, not really, but they kind of, I, I think you can find images on online of, of cover art or poster art for Robot Wars. It says Robot Jocks 2, maybe it's, uh, you know, other countries cover art, who the hell knows, but at any rate we've got Robot Wars, and panning further down, the robot, the main robot, the quote-unquote good robot, which is basically the crash and burn robot with the chest basically hollowed out and a head put on top. Um, for those of you who don't know, Full Moon put out a movie in the early 90s called Crash and Burn with Megan Ward and some other people in there as well, Bill Mosley and some guy who kind of disappeared. So basically the main good robot in Robot Wars is more or less the crash and burn robot just reused two or three years later. As we can see some lightning and exciting explosions all around the robot as the one other robot is shooting the robot. Incidentally no lasers come out of that place that's right next to the cockpit. All the lasers from the scorpion robot come out of the tail as is indicated on the cover. We also see this goofy looking uh, pyramid thing, which I think does play a part in the movie very briefly. I want to say it's the uh, pyramid. Oh, that, that might be, uh, that might be Total Recall. I was going to say Pyramid Mines, but I think this pyramid in, in Robot Wars might be where they st store all the 90s toxic waste and sludge that they bottled up and uh, put in there. Who the hell knows? It's been a while since I've seen Robot Wars, but I know that at some point 
the one guy, bad guy, is trying to blast into... I'm pretty sure the toxic stuff is, is stored inside that pyramid. He's trying to blast his way into the pyramid. Panning further down, we can see, like, I don't know, kind of the ground is... Looks like it's, like, you know, moved by an earthquake, kind of the end of Ghostbusters thing there. That doesn't happen in the movie. Fire coming out of the ground, which doesn't happen in the movie. They make the movie look a little more exciting on the cover art here. And all the way down at the bottom, we can see which isn't in the movie. Well, I guess there kind of is a half-assed tank thing at the beginning of the movie, I guess. So it's not a complete cheat. But there's a tank here that's, like, been blown up. And you can see these guys, they're, like, cheering on one of the robots. I don't know if those that's the Centros cheering on the, the Scorpion robot. Who the hell knows? At any rate, that doesn't really happen in the movie. I guess there is a tank that gets blown up, but so I guess you gotta give them that. But at the very bottom here, it just as so often is the case with so many 90s VHS or early 90s VHS Full Moon releases, we've got plus a video bonus, Full Moon's Video Zone, a behind the scenes video magazine taking a look at the right spine. I've always thought this image there of the stop-motion robot was really pretty cool. I don't know why they got to cut off his arms, but whatever. On the top of the spine you see the really cool good guy robot piloted by Drake and his, I don't know, new girlfriend squeeze Barbara Crampton. I can't even remember what the hell her character's name is. The Robot Wars logo, which is pretty cool, just on black. Closed caption logo, catalog number 15102. And at the time, the early 90s, the Paramount logo. Isn't that just crazy to see the Paramount logo? Like, the Full Moon logo, logo is not even on the spine, which is interesting. Taking a look at the left spine seems to be identical to the right spine. Top of this 30-year-old VHS cassette of Robot Wars looks like this. Got all your important information. Catalog number 1993, color 106 minutes. I think the 106 minutes might include the video zone because the Robot Wars movie is actually over just barely over an hour so that's kind of a cheat but I guess technically the video zone is I guess quote-unquote content produced produced by Full Moon PG stereo and closed caption logo can be seen there on the top of the VHS cassette cover taking a look at the back we've got the cool Robot Wars logo up uh, left top corner there and you've got what Paramount was doing at the time, the little white box with a barcode and your stuff indicating hi-fi stereo playback requires hi-fi stereo or stereo hi-fi. Oh that's interesting. Let's look at how they word it. Hi-fi stereo playback requires stereo hi-fi VCR. So they like they, they put it backwards from how it was. That's just funny. VHS hi-fi stereo Dolby BNR Dolby and the Dolby logo are trademarks of Dolby Laboratories Licensing Corporation. Obviously to sell this video cassette we've got three action photos, one of the stop-motion miniatures there, Robot Wars and the huge freaking I don't know 30 or 40 second maybe it's a couple minutes long robot battle at the end of this film. Another shot can be seen uh, Lisa Rena coming out of the little uh, compartment there that was on top of the, the, the hostage compartment or the compartment where the hostages were being kept on top of the scorpion robot that was uh, hijacked by the evil whatever the hell his name is. It's like a process shot where the stop motion uh, two-legged robot standing up straight is an animated behind there which is a pretty cool shot. You've got live action foreground and animated background, kind of a, one of the cooler shots in the film. And then on the uh, far right there, we've got uh, Drake and his sidekick Stumpy, also known as the, 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 the snooty guy at the, I don't know, the hotel at your, or not, not National Lampoon's vacation where he's, you know, not without a major credit card. I think that's the only other thing I can remember seeing him in other than those uh, episodes of Coach or whatever. Metal against metal, blow upon blow, powerful arms reach out to grab and choke, electrifying lasers light up the sky as they ricochet off solid plates of steel. The ultimate battle between metallic giants begins when a malicious foreign dignitary hijacks the last mega robot on earth, the Maris II and threatens to unleash its crushing powers against the people of the Eastern Alliance. There's only one force magnificent enough to stop the Maris II. 
a mega one. Makes sense. Robot hidden under the city. It's up to renegade pilot, his engineer, and a brilliant archaeologist to revive the Mega One and reestablish <laughs> world peace. I mean, they never really, I don't think world peace was ever a, a, a threat, but whatever. It sounds good. Will the Mega One be able to survive the onslaught of the new robot and its superior technology? A phenomenal battle lies ahead. Uh, and maybe not that phenomenal, but what the hell, I loved it as a 16 year old 30 years ago. Then you've got your credits there, as you can see on the bottom beneath the credits, copyright 1993, Full Moon Entertainment, all rights reserved. This being a early 90s release, it is recorded like so many things were at the time, in ultra stereo. On the very bottom there, it's the only place I think on this whole release where they actually do have the Full Moon logo. Full Moon Entertainment, right next to the Paramount logo there, distributed and marketed exclusively by Paramount Home Video. And you can see there the, uh, well, you probably can't see the holographic nature of the sticker on the video, but back in the day, um, Paramount put uh, so many of the VHS home video releases were like this, so many different studios, they did it in different ways, but at the time, Paramount was putting a holographic seal which could not be duplicated on their VHS which would indicate if it was a new or used cassette. Taking a look at the VHS cassette itself, this is what Paramount VHS tapes looked like in the early 90s. Kind of cool, different, it's like, what is there, like uh, one, two, three, like four different colors there. White label, blue Paramount logo, kind of burgundy-ish, Robot Wars, 93 color, 106 minutes, stereo, PG, all that stuff. Copyright 1993, Full Moon Entertainment, all rights reserved, and under the blue line we've got green information there, your all-important copyright warning information in green. Taking a look at the spine, similar thing going on, white label, burgundy, robot wars, burgundy stereo, blue line, green, hi-fi, blue paramount, and burgundy, catalog number 15102. Now, having shown you the best VHS copy of Robot Wars I have, I can show you one of the least best, or second best, I guess, and second best only being because there's this video store sticker there indicating 421A and sci-fi slash fantasy there. I didn't bother trying to peel it off. Uh, I don't want to ruin the, the tape cover or anything, and it kind of gives it some video store quaintness, but here's the second best VHS. Obviously, we're not going to show you you know, close up of this same thing all over again, but I'll just be show you the basics. Second best VHS of Robot Wars. Here's one of the clamshell Robot Wars. Very simple goings on. Very familiar stuff going on. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me show you something else on this one as well. So I kind of did some trickery by blending, you know, the best of these two actual covers together for the photos of the close-up close, close -up photos of showing you the stuff. So on this best copy I have, there's a little sticker over the barcode here, which would probably indicate this was like what they called, I don't know what it meant, but a pre-pack situation where maybe they got uh, two or more at a reduced value kind of a thing. And probably when they do that, they probably put the because they're not labeled for individual sale, they probably cover up the barcode. So that's what's going on with this. So this is technically the the best one I have with both spines intact. I kind of did, a, on the photos that I showed you of the close-up, I did a mishmash of this VHS and this one because this one's got the sticker there on the spine, but it doesn't have the sticker over the barcode. So I did a mishmash of the best to show you the close-up photos of one of these covers, well, that's not cut down for a clamshell. Here's another of the clamshell releases, as I've already indicated, very familiar. I've kind of noticed that, uh, yet, yet again, probably another one of these pre-pack situations where they got multiple copies, most likely at a reduced price. Looking at this one, same thing, barcode is covered, very cool goings on, Robot Wars, 
you can see for to sell the VHS the little barcode there has been scribbled over. How's that go with these other ones? I already showed you. Okay, so this barcode's intact. Maybe someone forgot to scribble it. And this one's like part scribbled. These are probably these three are probably from different video updates. This this looks like it's a video update as well. And this is the last one, the faded, faded cover version. Spine there and back. So lucky you, you've just witnessed all six. For some reason I thought I had five, but it turns out I have six VHS copies of Robot Wars from 1993. Uh, feel free to check out my other Robot Wars related videos on this channel. I show a really cool collage or whatever the hell you want to call it. Clips of all the Robot Wars things I own. I probably won't be showcasing all of it, but I will be stopping by to showcase at some point in the coming days, weeks, the laser disc and also the compact disc soundtrack CD that I own most likely, unless I really feel ambitious, will not probably pull out the poster as that's buried and you can see the poster on one of my other, like, one of my first, maybe both of the Robot Wars reviews. At least the first one, like the oldest Robot War review from, I think it's like 10 years ago, probably is going to be that video that showcases the clips of all the Robot Wars things that I own, the VHSs, the, the DVD. I, I suppose I could stop on by to show the DVD. That's not that amazing, but DVD, Laserdisc, Compact Disc, Soundtrack, and, and uh, Video Store poster. But at any rate, I guess that does it. For this video, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, peekaboo, I kill you. We'll catch you on the next video.